and I will try to delve into the most important aspects and all of this is actually available online as an open source project, all the code, so you can go and um, investigate this yourself. So where this comes from is, you know, as Ben mentioned, the, the iPhones out there, the Androids out there, the smartphones, they get a lot of attention these days. Um, from developers, but you have to realize that they're actually only a very small niche of the market. They're prevalent or they're, they're uh, available in you know, many Western countries, in rich countries, but the vast majority of the population in the world, especially in the emerging markets, is not using iPhones and Android phones. They're using feature phones, you know, sub $50 phones, and most of these devices run Java and E. And um, so where this talk came from is that how do you build interesting feature-rich applications for these mass market devices, for the devices that are out there in the billions today. And Java and E actually has all the technology to do that. And so I wanted to build a demo application, a sample that shows you um, how you would go about building such a, a, a smartphone-like application. So, I'll actually, since I'm going to rearrange the talk anyway, I'll just spend some time on this introduction slide. So, so as I mentioned, um, the, the vast majority of the mobile devices out there today are actually Java and E devices by a factor of 10 or more, 20. Um, they dwarf the smartphone deployments. And actually developers, many developers that come to Oracle say, well, you know, my boss always talks about the iPhone or the Android devices, but we're making most of our money in mobile Java with Java and E, right? And that's where, where we keep <coughs> focusing. And in fact, the, the really growing markets in the world are the emerging markets. And so that is where most of the growth is. However, you have to you know, you have to give it to Apple that one thing they did with the iPhone is definitely raise the bar in terms of the user experience, right? Um, all of a sudden people realized, oh, you know, this is, this is what a device has to look like. This is how I need to be able to interact with it, you know. This is the feature richness of the user interface and the application set. This is what users now expect. So they have raised the bar. and. You as an application developer, if you want to compete in today's market, you need to um, have applications that are visually rich and, and compelling and engaging, right? Because good design ultimately drives value, allows you to sell you know, more licenses of the applications, charge a higher price, find a bigger market, right? So user experience drives emotion and satisfaction. And this is what we're trying to show you here is how do I create interesting, rich applications even on you know, phones that might not have the horsepower, don't have um, the, the capabilities that maybe smartphones have. Um, one, thing you, one thing you see here on your right is different screenshots of applications. These are all mobile Java, Java any applications that run on, on you know, feature phone devices. And they all look professional, they all have different, you know, look and feel to it, different branding. And these are all things that are out in the market today already. So there are a couple of technology pieces um, that I would like to introduce um, that are important for this demonstration. So one thing is the lightweight user interface toolkit. And I'll actually talk more about this in the following presentation. What I just want to say here is that the lightweight user interface toolkit, or LUIT as we call it, is really a, a key technology that allows you to build rich and compelling user interfaces across a wide range of devices and platforms. And in fact, it's been ported to um, mobile Java, so MintP, it's been ported to the BlackBerry platform, to even to Android, to TV platforms and others. It's a UI, component-based UI toolkit. It's inspired by Swing. So if you've ever done Swing programming, this will look very familiar. And best of all, it's free, yeah, even for commercial use. It's open source, so you can look at the code, you can modify the code. 
But if you go and integrate that, you know, use the lightweight UI toolkit with your application, um, you don't have to, you know, get a license from Oracle. You don't have to pay us any money. Very active. A lot of independent software vendors and developers are using the lightweight UI toolkit. Um, I will talk about all this in the next presentation. Actually, let me just show you this code briefly. So if you're writing a mobile Java application, it's actually very easy to get started with a lightweight UI toolkit. This is an application skeleton. So the basics of a Lewin application. Um, at the top, you initialize the first two lines of initialization. So you initialize the virtual keyboard, and you initialize the Lewin display. Lewin is fully theme themable, so you can change the look and feel of your application with two lines of code. There's what's called a resource file. The resource file contains all the information about what the application looks like, you know, images, borders, backgrounds, things like that. Um, so you create this theme file in an external tool, and then in your application, you simply load, you open the file, you load the resource, and then you just set the theme with the UI manager. And that completely changes the look and feel of the application. And I'll show you some more examples where you can, you can make the application look and feel very different um, and brand it according to your audience and your needs. Um, once you've set the theme, you can open, uh, let's say we just want to um, have a search box, a text box on the screen. So in Lewitt, that's a form. So you do a new on. This is a search form, so it's a, a subclass that we've created. Opens a window in a little text box. You would add a command. So this is uh, Mike Swing programming. You add listeners. You would add a command, which ends up being a button or a soft menu key on the screen with, for example, search. And if the user pushes that button, selects that menu command, uh, a listener is called, for example, action performed, and that would show the map. Right? So, very straightforward, and this creates a complete user interface for you. Talk about two more pieces of this sample application. Um, so as I said, the sample application, what we want to do is, is replicate some of the cool networking social mashup functionality that you see on some of the smartphones. Um, so one thing we definitely need to do is consume web services. Um, Google Maps, you know, Yahoo Local Business Search, Twitter, you name it. Right? So you could do that manually, you could write all that code, but there is a library that you can use called Mobile Ajax for Java ME. And it's very straightforward, it's, it's a number of libraries and some sample applications that allow you to consume web services like you know, Twitter or um, Flickr, um, Yahoo, and other things. Very very easily. Again, won't go into too much detail. You can find this online. And then the last bit of information, you know, no application today, no mobile application today is complete without some sort of Twitter integration. So we'll do that too. Again, um, interacting with Twitter is not easy because you need to authenticate your application and authorize it. But again, there is a library that helps you doing that, and it implements all the non-trivial parts of um, interacting with Twitter. And so using the Twitter API, API and me makes that very straightforward as well. So we'll use the Lightweight UI Toolkit, um, the Mobile Ajax for Java and and the Twitter API and me, those three parts of the um, technology to build this demo, right? And so um, let me just walk you through the live demo. Oops. Yeah, you can see it. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm using NetBeans. Um, how many of you know with NetBeans? And I'm using the mobile Java plugin, or the um, emulator plugin, to develop a Java ME application, so I have some source code here, and then I can run it in the emulation 
So there's a desktop emulation that emulates a mobile phone, and I can run that directly from NetBeans. So once I've developed my application, I just click on the Run button here, right, and it starts the mobile device emulator. And so here's my application. So the first thing, this is the search, um, the search form that I mentioned that I showed you the skeleton code. The search form just brings up this little uh, text box, and I can type in a keyword. So uh, this is one of the features you see right away with the lightweight UI toolkit. It's fully touch enabled. So there's a virtual keyboard here that I could use. Right? Um, you get the touch uh, support for free. You don't have to do anything as an application developer. Same thing here for soft buttons. Um, they are um, automatically handled. You can either click on the button itself or you can click on the, the screen. So anyway, so we let the user type in a keyword and the user is searching for a restaurant that um, they want to meet for dinner, for example. Um, so I'm in the city somewhere. My device knows the GPS location. So I have some code that actually reads, reads the GPS information on the device. And I let the user type in a keyword, and now I do a Yahoo business search. So I do a web service call with my current location, the keyword, and I'm searching businesses within a certain diameter of where I am, certain radius. And then I get the results, and the results on the screen. So let's do this. When I click search here, I actually do a live web services call over the internet to Yahoo if the internet connection works. Maybe not. Let's see. So. So this is classical demo. Oh, it's connected. Yeah, I think so. Should be. It just worked five minutes ago. Start the application here. So it's actually recompiling the application, deploying it to the emulator, and then starting the emulator, which takes a few seconds. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So I search. Yes. Okay. So now, what happened is we did the web service call. So I've, I've simulated my, my position right here in San Francisco, obviously. But the code is there to actually query the GPS. Um, so I'm in San Francisco, and I've searched uh, coffee shops 
uh, around the blue X, which is my, my local, uh, my uh, position. And this is a map that I got from Google. So that was another web service call I did. I got a map with a certain zoom factor and a radius. The map is a background image, but I can interact with the components on the foreground, right? So it's an interactive map. I can look at the details of uh, a particular restaurant, for example. Um, another nice thing you get with Lewitt, for, um, for example, is here's a text box, and if the text box is, if the text does not fit into the text box, I can scroll around. Um, Lewitt gives all of this for free, so very simple. Um, let's say I, oh, and here are my friends. These are, um, I could get those positions from a uh, third party server. Right now, they're also simulated. So here are my friends, and let's say, okay, I'm choosing, you know, this restaurant here to meet. Oh, we got Starbucks, okay, fine. So I can see whether uh, people have left any reviews, but let me just select it. So now you see that the, um, the icon is selected, and now let's say I want to find out how to get there. So this is kind of trivial because it's you know, also small, but to make the point, I can do a web service call to Google to get directions. I get the walking information and I can refresh the screen and now I have the directions in there. <coughs> so again, this is all live web services calls. And so now let's say I want to um, announce on Twitter where we're meeting, right? So that anybody who's subscribed to my Twitter feed can, um, can see where we're going. So I'll say, all right, let's, um, let's announce that we're meeting at Starbucks. So it's pre-populated this information at a certain time. So, you know, let's say 8 o'clock or whatever. Oops. Okay, so now if I click the send button, we do a round trip to Twitter. We authenticate with Twitter and we use the Twitter and me API to actually post a tweet. So let's do that. And you can see how, how fast this happens even over the um, relatively slow internet connection we have. So now the tweet has happened and we can go to anybody who has the web browser open or can you know, look at their Twitter feeds. So this is a tweet I did before for testing, but if I reload, So this is my test account that I used to post. So you can see that the tweet actually happened. And more interestingly, this was a geocache tweet because I have my local information. I'm able to geolocate, add uh, location information to the tweet. So if somebody clicks on this little icon here, I actually see a map with the tweet location. Right? So that's a nice way to easily show people where we're actually being. Right. So, the idea here is that you get the full integration with various web services, you get to access local features on the device, um, and wrap all this into, into a nice looking application. And, let me see, I'll skip over all this detail in the interest of time. Right. So let me just wrap up by saying, you know, this is a work in progress. So this is just to show you how to get started and demonstrate some of the ideas behind it. There are lots of things you could do. I'm not claiming this is the ultimate application, the best ever, but it's a starting point. You can add a number of things to make it more interesting. Splash screens, you can have a moving map, you can zoom the map, you can integrate with other web services like Foursquare. You can do deep integration with platform features and advertising. So basically build a, build a full application around it that is really attractive and useful. So in summary, it's not always about smartphones. The market, the bulk of the market is in feature phones that run Java and E. You can write compelling, interesting applications that make you money using mobile Java. And 
I blogged about this project and I open sourced, I created an open source project with all the source code. It's a complete NetBeats project. You can find it on my blog, terrencebar.wordpress.com, with a, a brief video, background information. There's lots more information on Lewitt, Mobile Ajax project, Twitter API, and me. And you know, if you have any questions, contact me. And I um, plan to add to the project over time to make it, you know, just to add more features and make it more interesting. So, do we have any questions? <clears throat> oh, a couple of questions, yes. Pretty much everywhere. 